Welcome to the checkpoints. In our second segment, we have been looking at uh, the Karamoja region with Honorable Slochap, who is uh, talking to us about the region, about this kind of iron sheets that um, has been going on in the media, but also talking to us how government could help them as a region to cope and be at par with the rest of the country. So, Honorable. You have been elaborating to us the challenges of the region. Uh, tell us more about what else your people are facing and, and uh, how they are living down there in your uh, region of Karamoja. Yes, thank you very much, Vivian. Uh, the people of Karamoja need to be attended to. One, when the side of uh, economic activities there is almost nothing taking place in the area for one reason is that uh, these are people who only would depend on their cow and on uh, agriculture when agriculture fails definitely they have to depend on their cow so what you are telling us uh, honorable like you said before we went for the break yes. is that the practices of cattle wrestling the movements from one area to another have all stopped? Yes, cattle, real cattle rustling has stopped. What is there now is theft. And uh, the cattle rustling, uh, the, the cattle theft has been commercialized. Once your animals are raided today, by night they have been loaded in the vehicles and, uh, and taken away. To where? To unknown destination. The, the thieves, the, the, of course, by the thieves know whom, they, whom to sell and then the one who buys knows where to take. So that's, that's, that's one of the issues. And, and that has affected already the region because even the number of cows which had increased has reduced so because of this commercialization. Those thieves, Honorable, are they people from the community? Are they people who come from other regions? Let These me are people, uh, this, we, have, we have thieves within the, within the community. Then we have also thieves outside the knee outside the community, who connive with these people and, they, and, they, and whenever they steal the animals, they know where to sell and who to pick their, their need. Then under, under, the, under this scientific way of handling issues now, the, 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 the phone business, just send them, they send you money, your, your money in the mobile phone. So that is it now. So it is no longer a, a raid where you raid and go and keep for prestige, it is now you read and send. Okay. So uh, the challenge of uh, the cattle thieving. And, and we would have managed this if we had this. So if actually those who are in roadblocks were very tough and they are able to, to sustain it. If those who are in the authority of investigation and intelligence were able to do their work, because everybody has left. It is work, and they are now doing business. Do you think that uh, those people at roadblocks whom you're talking about, and those should be security operatives, do you think they connive with the thieves to probably, this cattle Probably, that's why the cars thieving. pass. Mm. The vehicles pass through, through roadblocks. They, yes. they pass through our roads. They don't, they don't fly in the air, but they go through the road, and that's why the, our animals go, pass. Okay, Officer um, Honorable, now off to insecurity because you can see there is an element of insecurity there. Yeah. Where are the guns coming from in that region? So the, guns, the guns that um, uh, the people have. The guns, I remember in the other disarmament, which I participated when I was a district chairperson and when I was a resident district commissioner. I, man, I, I, I remember the army, the security intelligence, everybody was concerned and we removed the guns and there were no and there were no guns in Karamoja. But as of now, because Karamoja is porous, we have porous borders. And our neighbors, the Pokot of of, of Kenya, West Pokot of Kenya, the Turkana of Kenya, the 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 Topos and the of, of Southern Sudan, this is where the source of guns are. And because our borders are porous these guns come through those areas. And that's how the Karamojans have acquired these guns. And there might be also a few within 
which they might have kept during the disarmament. But the most, the, the most areas which, are, which have actually turned this area into an armed area are the Turkan, are the, the guns coming from Turkana, from Pokot, and from Sudan, including bullets. Hmm. Explain to us uh, or update us on the disarmament program that the UPDF has been uh, carrying out there. How is this disarmament program progressing there? Well, the disarmament program, as of now, is uh, progressing, but uh, it is not satisfactory. Because it's not like the one we did in, in 2006 to 2011. And 2006 to 2011, by, uh, by, by, by 2011, there were no more guns. But now we don't know how, the, how this one is being handled. And of course, this one now, as I've told you, the guns are in the hands of criminal gangs, people who have formed cliques. They know where to, where, where to hide. They know. So the UPDF is here. Tomorrow they are there. So that kind of thing. So it needs now, it should, this, intel, this disarmament should now be intelligence-led. Because we had expected to be intelligence-led disarmament. That's the only way we can get these this guns. They are not as many as they used to be. But they are few, but very dangerous. And they are flagging the, the, the region into chaos. Okay. So what do you advise government to do to handle or to improve on what they're already doing in the disarmament uh, program, which you're saying is not satisfactory? You want an intelligence um, uh, disarmament, mm. an intelligence led, led disarmament yes. uh, exercise. How is this one not intelligence led? Yeah, because now the issue is if a thief comes and raids my, my, my animals, then the, the, the hammer or the intelligence, the police, everybody who is charged with security, should be able to track for that gun and get that gun out. The problem we have not been getting is the guns. The animals are taken, they disappear. The, the, even the gun which came to, to look for it is not good. So the army should be actually looking for where is this gun which took the, the cows of Peter Ken, or the cows of so and so. If we begin pressing them like that until we get those guns, then we would, have, we would succeed in this exercise. Okay. Um, now, off to your region with all these challenges that you have uh, uh, pointed out. What should government do to bring the region at par with the rest of uh, the country? Yeah, we, we, we need the, the region, if we want this region actually to come together, uh, we need, first of all, we need to address the issues of poverty in the area. Being one of the elements which is actually making maybe this policy and, and the rest. That one must be addressed. And you can address them you know, by providing income generating activities. Then secondly, you can also, you, you, you can do it by mechanizing agriculture in Karamoja. Because agriculture, uh, Karamoja is not, a, is not a barren land. It is actually a fertile land. We don't use even any chemicals. But we have been using a hoe, that smaller hoe we, we use from those very centuries up to today. How, how, how much land can you open with that? So we need the tractors. Honorable, that hoe is also being used elsewhere in the country. Yes, but uh, where exactly? But at least there should be some accompaniment of some, uh, some tractors. You cannot use it from the, from the 17th century up to now you are using that. Or you think you will open more land? The population has, is growing. We need people to go to, uh, to, to commercial agriculture. And you are still using the oil. Because even whatever, like of recent, uh, in the other budget, they had given a caramel over 70, 70 billion to buy tractors of which tractors were now given everywhere. Every, every so that makes us feel that we are being marginalized. Because even what belongs to us is what people can divide among themselves. But you see, Honorable, um, you need yourselves as leaders there and even the people of Karamoja to come up with initiatives that, um, that um, help you to have a livelihood away from the government's uh, affirmative actions and uh, provision of some of these things you're talking about. How can that be achieved? Yeah, it, can, it cannot be achieved because, first of all, 
who is supposed to bring who is supposed to bring uh, law and order in an area of that kind? It's the government. government. It is the government. Yes. So if government does not want to bring law and order. What can we do as leaders? For us, we are pro. We are saying let's work together. Some of them they don't want to work with us. What do we do? Is the question. Hmm. So you find them blaming this is politicians. For us, we are willing to work with the government. We are willing to work with the army. We are willing to work with everybody, even with the, with the partners in development. But uh, when there is insecurity, how do you how do we really uh, help? As local leaders, have you done any initiatives? to talk to your people and tell them this thieving is aided by us, the community. How don't we find reasons to stop this? There's no meeting even last week we had just as members of parliament for Nabila Tuk and Napak, we had, a, we had a very big meeting where we called the division commander and all, 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 all the security officers and they attended. And we have been talking about peace. And we have been talking about development. That without the peace, there is no development. And indeed, people are people now in those areas. Are, there is some kind of uh, peace now. After that meeting, we have been talking to these people here. Yeah. Mm. Does not mean that we don't talk, but we talk, but we need support from the rest of the uh, the government machineries yeah. to help us. Because I can talk as Rochap, but a native of that area. But when you come and talk as Vivian, at least you will also have some some value to my what? To my, to, to my speech. Okay. So the local leaders there, say the LC5 uh, members in the different um, uh, districts that form uh, Karamoja sub-region, um, what is going to be next in the wake of uh, a failed disarmament uh, program, uh, this cattle thieving that is there? What is there for them to do? In the wake of that failed disarmament program and uh, what we are talking about, these scandals that are going on, what are local leaders like the LC5 uh, members, chairpersons down there, what are they going to, to do for their people? Yes, I, I want you to get me, uh, to get me right. Yeah. Uh, disarmament is not failing, yeah. but only that uh, somewhere it has been mismanaged. Mm -hmm. But it's succeeding because in some areas the places are, the place is becoming quiet. So it is just the only what is failing only disarmament is when an when an incident takes place, it takes long for the security to react. And even when they react, they don't get that gun which came and used that. And you know when you keep on not recovering the gun which brought a problem to that is to that area then you are, you, you, are, you are making the problem to multiply. So other people will say, after all, even if you see, they will not follow you up. So for us, we are not, the disarmament is not failing, but it needs us again putting, pulling up our socks and tightening and coming together to make sure that we want to disarm a community which is harmed so that we see peace in our area. Then how about the local leadership initiatives down the, there? The local li li leadership is very clear. Yes, yes. Apart, apart from, from the that. meetings that you organize to talk to the people, like you just explained We also us. meet as leaders. Yes. We have always met as leaders. We have always forged a way forward. But at times, because of what I've already mentioned, we get uh, actually defeated to a certain extent. But we shall not get defeated because we want we want that area also to be peaceful like any other area. Okay. The, the problem of famine, which is a natural calamity drought, because the famine is a higher um, a level once it goes past the drought. Mm. And uh, experts say that what we experience there are droughts mm. in Karamoja uh, mm. sub-region. Mm. Now, those issues to do with uh, famine, you have talked about dams that um, the first lady helped construct there. How else do you want government to deal with that? Because last year we had uh, a situation where your uh, group at parliament, the MPs from the Karamoja region, asked uh, the public or well-wishers who could come up and help uh, with relief because of the drought. What, what can be done in preparation for seasons like that? Yeah, what we need, we needed the government to put infrastructure in place, especially like dams. 
You can imagine the whole region will have only about three dams which you have water. Mm -hmm. So we needed more than that. And of course, I know government has been uh, injecting a lot of funds in, in those uh, projects. But those who are given the opportunity to, to do, don't do to the expectation of the people. Like for reason in my, in my area, there is a dam which costed about 1.2, uh, a valley tank which costed about 1.2 billion shillings. But there is no water for the last five years. There is no water. We have never even seen any drop of water. But they tell you the dam is there, the dam is there. You know, these invisible dams are a problem to, to us. And of course, the award is always being done in, in, at the ministry level. So we, at times, following them, you can't get them. So we are saying government should actually add in, in uh, water for production. We need water for production. So that even, even, even when it's there, people can even at, at least irrigate some small uh, plots of theirs so to have some cabbages, some tomatoes around and the rest. But where there's no water, what do you expect? And for us, when the dry soil like this one now comes, all, you know, when it rains, Karamoja, we are just in a, in a kind of a tilted, a raised plateau. All the water tend to, to come down. That's why you hear always the haters are complaining, because our people will say, we are following our water which rain in April, and we have come only to take this water, and then after, after this season, we shall go back. So there is a need to, uh, to harvest water, there is a need actually to have more dams, and there is a need to have more, more valley tanks in the area, if we want actually to, to, to curb this insecurity and this uh, uh, movement of people and, and animals from place to place. As we end this, uh, Honorable, um, as an MP who provides oversight for the issues of uh, Karamoja, what uh, do you plan to do? What should your people expect from you in the, that sense? Of course, there are people expect from me. They expect a lot. You know, being a member of parliament, people expect a lot. They expect you to bring schools. They expect the hospitals. They expect all, all that. Have you constructed any schools any or school? hospitals? It is, the work, it is the work of government. We are telling government, and I'm sure they are constructing some. They, they are about in this financial year. Have, we are you, getting a few have you sensitized your people about your role? We have. Yes. And they are aware. And whatever they get, they, they take it as theirs. You know, the problem also has been that... Uh, there was no ownership in the very beginning. But as of now, whatever goes to them and you explain to them, they will own it. That's why I'm, I still refer you to the other dams, which they have never been silted up to now. They still have water because they own it. And they, and they water the animals from a far distance, not directly from the dam. So there's that sense of ownership now. But only that the resources, only that actually. Uh, the resources are either scarce or what, and we cannot. Yes. Mm. Uh, about your oversight uh, duties. My oversight region. role is very clear. Whatever government uh, takes there, it is me to make sure that it's well, it's well implemented. Mm. And aware of that this is just where I am. This is just my first term in what in the parliament. This is my first time in parliament. And whatever project now goes. We all follow and we make sure that it is actually done to our expectation. All what I've been telling you about what was history of those who were there. But to, uh, for those of us who are now in parliament, we want to see a change the Karamoja. And we want to see a Karamoja which has also received resources like other areas. And that was why the issue of the iron sheets came first. Because we saw we were not going to get these iron sheets at that level of distribution. Thank you very much, Honorable. Thank you so much. Um, that has been the checkpoint this week. We thank you for having uh, followed us this far. And uh, the checkpoint is always here to get deeper analysis of the issues that have come out in the media and check on entities or different uh, MPs who are supposed to be telling us what they are doing as an oversight duty right here at Parliament when they are away from their constituencies. Thank you. Until next week, the checkpoints.